So then in terms of the size of the cash flow, uh, what, what do you really look at then to, to make sure that you have, or you're getting the right number? Because it does seem that business owners, the more they report as cash flow, I would think the more they would pay in taxes. Sure. Um, I think the first adjustment you would make to come up to what we would consider the cash flow used for valuation purposes we would be looking at owner's compensation. Um, if you looked at the tax return of any private business, there's always an owner's line, and that owner's line typically uh, has a large number in it. And that large number is an expense. So for many private companies, they actually don't report uh, profits, or if they do, it it's very, tends to be very small. And the reason is that owner's compensation is a major expense. Now, owner's compensation is made up of two components. It's made up of the wage you would normally pay somebody doing the owner's job, plus a dividend that the owner is paying himself or herself. Now, that dividend is really a return to capital, as we'd say in finance or investment. Essentially, it's, a, it's, the, it's the cash flow that the assets are generating, and it's the reward for owning those assets. And when we look at a business, we want to we know what those dividends are or what that portion of the cash flow happens to be. So one adjustment you would normally make is you'd say, well, what would somebody doing this job in this business, if it were a manufacturing company, located in uh, Waltham, Massachusetts, uh, revenue size of $15 million, what would an owner pay himself or herself for that kind of a business? And uh, we at Axiom, but there are other places, have databases that allow us to determine what, that, what we call that benchmark wage is. So for an example, if the, if the database would say that uh, the wage was $100,000 for this particular owner, and the owner was paying him or herself $200,000, then the difference between 200 and 100 would be a hundred thousand dollar dividend, and that would be the, the the part. We would adjust the reported cash flow, that namely we would increase the reported cash flow by that amount. So that's the first major adjustment. The second major adjustment has to do with discretionary expenses. There are a lot of expenses within a private firm, since the owner makes judgment as to whether to spend the money or not, that what we call are discretionary. Now, some are uh, what I call uh, uh, the kinds of discretionary expenses that one would normally see, for example, charitable contribution or uh, non-mandatory contribution to a profit-sharing plan. Uh, what we would do is back all that out because that's a return to capital. Then there are other expenses, of course, that have to do with uh, things like travel and entertainment, ownership of car, club memberships. Uh, and here we work, uh, we do the, we do this, the same calculus, if you will, with these kinds of expenses that we did with officers' compensation, what we would do is we can compare travel and entertainment expense with a benchmark number. If the travel and entertainment expense was too high, would, we would uh, simply take that difference and add that to cash flow. Same thing for club memberships and, and others. So what we would do is take the, the reported numbers and adjust them relative to these benchmarks to get an adjusted cash flow number. And in virtually all cases, what that does is essentially take the cash flow from something close to zero in many for many businesses and makes it, if the business is very prosperous, rather significant. And if somebody's buying the business or just valuing it for purposes of valuation, not necessarily a transaction, then that business would be worth a lot of money. Now, in 2001, 2002, many businesses have had, let's say, tough years. Uh, relative to perhaps the 99, 98, 2000. Um, how do you handle situations like that in terms of what is the baseline uh, that you use for evaluation? Well, uh, re I think the thing to keep in mind is, is that the historical financials are important to help determine this baseline, but valuation in the end is, a something, is about what's going to go on in the future. So the first thing you'd really want to do is determine what, what we would consider the normalized operating cash flow of the business would happen to be, uh, given, the ups and downs of, given the ups and downs of that business. But as it turns out, when you look at academic research on these matters, because your question really gets to where's the starting point, what's the right starting point, it turns out, because of the nature of the way valuation is done, it may not make any much of a difference as to whether you take the most current years even if it might be lower than normal or higher than normal, and use that as a starting point. Because in the end, it, doesn't, it turns out it doesn't make all that much of a difference. Uh, now, in some cases, it can make a tremendous amount of difference where it's clear that the current number is so far off the normalized number 
that you have to make an adjustment. So there, I think, it's really the, val the, the valuation analyst expertise and knowledge of the business, products, services, what the likely future path of those uh, sales of products and services happen to be in cash flow that has to make a judgment whether a normalization, some adjustment has to be made to the kind of that baseline number.